Foot defects that can occur in the rail section. So these defects are categorized into the first one, the corrugated or rolling off rails. The second is hog rails, kings in rails and the buckling off rails. So we'll be discussing about the each and every defects in details and what all the remedial measures to overcome those defects will be discussed further. So the first type of defects what you can see in the uh, rail sections are corrugated or Roaring rails. So it, uh, in certain places like where the frequently brakes are applied or at the places where the train start. So the red head of the rails get found to be corrugated compared to the other section of the track or the straight section. So that will be very smooth. So as you can see here, so here the corrugations will be formed on the head of the rail section. So because of these corrugations that are there in the rail section that will create the whenever the train passes, uh, passes over such rails which has been corrugated, a roaring sound will occur. So that roaring sound will be very unpleasant to hear and that's why this kind of defect can also be called as the roaring rails, corrugated rails or the roaring rails. So now here what is the reasons for occurrence of such type of defects? So here the patients uh, can be called as the peculiar uh, in its nature of occurrence. So it is peculiar in the nature where it has been occurring and also it has been peculiar um, for the occurrence of the corrugation. So now let us look into the what are all these peculiarities. So some of the peculiarities which are which includes in the nature of occurrence, so that will include so the corrugation can occur on any part of the rail section, and if any one part of the rail section is get corrugated, the entire rail section gets corrugated and also this can occur the corrugation can occur at any gradient and on any track, so there is no restrictions over it. And when the new rails are laid, where the corrugations are present, the new rails also found to get corrugated. And the next one is the where the corrugation will occur, which part of the rail section which will be subjected to the corrugation. So now uh, it we also call that the corrugation occurrence of uh, corrugation is also peculiar in nature. And it is found that the corrugations are occur in the places where broken bricks are used as the ballast. So usually we will use the stone aggregate as the ballast. We can also use the kinkers, broken bricks and also the local available muram soil as a ballast material. So these corrugations are found to occur wherever the ballast consists of the broken bricks. And also at the places where bricks are applied to stop the train or in the places where the train start. And it can also occur in the electrified section of the railway track along with the along the tracks passing through the long channel. So these are the some of the places where the corrugations can occur. Now the what are the causes that will cause the corrugation. So now uh, and next, uh, what is the cause that is making corrugation? So we, there is no definite cause why the corrugations will occur. So some explains that the corrugations are due to the phosphorus in the composition of the rail steel. And some others give the reason that the resiliency of the track has an important bearing on the occurrence of the corrugations. And some attributes to the reason that intensity of weight that has been transferred over the small area of rails, so which will not be uniform and that may form the corrugation. So we are, there is no particular cause, we don't know what is the exactly the one which is causing the corrugations. But each and every researcher has found explained the corrugation, the cause of the corrugation in the different manner. So now what is the remedial measure to overcome these corrugations? As we can see the corrugations occurs on the head portion of the rail section. So those corrugations are removed by grinding few centimeters of the rail head. Okay, so that grinding can be done with the uh, help of the special grinding train, so which is having the capability of the move at the speed of three kilometers per hour. So when the grinding is in action, so with the uh, with the help of this, you can remove those part which has been corrugated. And the next defects we have is the hog rail. So this uh, hogging of the rails can be seen at the joints. So whenever there is a battering of action of the wheels over the end of the rails, what will happen? These ends get battered. It get bent down and get well reflected at the 
ends so these such rails we call it as the hogged rails so this uh, uh, hogging occurs because of the loose packing under the joints and also the because of the loose fish plates from the fish broods so this defects will cause the rough riding surface to the railway sections so now what are the remedial measures to rectify these hogged rail some of the methods include cropping of the rail section replacing welding and the rehogging so in the cropping what we will do is whichever the part which has been hogged so that part will be cut off and the fresh holes are made to fixing the fish plots are provided next one is the replacing so we will replace the whatever the rail section which has been hogged replace the rail section with the new rails however the replacing this section is highly uneconomical and the third option what we have is the welding hogged rails are bought to the level so wherever the portion which has been batted so that will bought to the level by welding over the worn out or the bent portion at the ends and the last method is the dehogging so this method of uh, straightening the ends by means of uh, equipment called jim crow or dehogging meshes with the help of the these methods we can actually rectify the hogged rails so the next the next defect is the kinks in rail so as you can see here one part of the rail section is moved apart so when the ends of the adjoining rails mostly slide out of the position that defect we call it as the kinks in rail or shoulders in rail so now what are the causes for occurrence of kinks in rail so this can occurs because of the loose packing at the joints it can also be because of the defects in the gauge and alignment and the defects in the cross level at the jo uh, joints and uneven wear of the rail head so now what will happen if the kinks in rail occurs so this will cause a unpleasant jerk of in vehicle passing over them and due to the uneven wear of the rail head so these kinks can appear at any places other than joints and it will affect the smooth running of trains and the third uh, uh, effect is the series of kinks are seen at the curves due to which uh, defects in gauge can occur alignment can be disturbed and the cambers can also be uh, defected here so with this effect the turning operation of the train will be difficult for you so what are the remedial measure to overcome these kinks so by correcting the alignment at the joints and curve location you should have frequently maintain your tracks to and to check for the correct gate alignment and the camber at the curve location and also the proper packing has to be done at the joint portion and the periodic maintenance need to be done with respect to the cross levels gauge alignment and welding of worn out portion etc need to be done to minimize this effect of the kinks then the last defect what we can see is the buckling of rails so as you can see here the part of the portion of the rail section is smoothed out of the position okay so this bending of the rails we call it as the buckling of rails so what is the reason for occurrence of this buckling so this is mainly because of if you have provided insufficient gap for the expansion of the rail section so that will give rise to the buckling of the joint so now uh, what are the other reasons so one the first reason as i told you when the expansion gap is not sufficient so that the well rail section will not have enough place to move because of the thermal variation that will leads to the buckling and also the fish plates and fish bowls are very tight so when you have provided very tight fish plates and fish bowl your rail sections will be restricted to the movement so that may leads to the buckling and also the due to the presence of long longer welded rails on a weak track so when you make your rail section long by providing the weld there will not be have a sufficient gap for the expansion so that may leads to the buckling of the rail section and a uh, buckling of this uh, rail section cause many times the derailment serious derailment have been occurred so it's a very serious defect and wherever you see the buckling of the tracks that need to be rectified immediately and the what all the remedial measures so 
we have understood what is the cause which is making the buckling so now to remedial measures has to be taken one with respect to those causes so the first remedial measure is the blast section sleeper density and rail section must be checked frequently and need to be designed and redesigned if it is required under the various safety uh, under the various stresses and also the number of welded joints should not be very long and also the provision of sleeper um, sleepers and the anchors of, of welded rail should be done so what are all these steel sleepers and the anchoring of welded rails so will be studied in further um, when we discuss upon the railway fast turnings and also the proper rubrication of the contact surfaces of the fish plates and the uh, rails should be done so whenever you provide a proper rubrication on the fish, uh, fish plates so your rail section will be easy to move under the thermal expansion and the sufficient expansion gap should be provided by taking into the account of expansion of rails due to rising temperature in that particular rail region and the last remedial measure is that fish plate should not be tightened so hard to prevent the expansion or the contraction of the rails. So with these remedial measures, we can overcome the dehogging in the rail section. So these are only some of the defects that can occur in the rail section. With this, I'll conclude this session and when the next session, I'll be discussing upon the various failures in the rail section and also the joints that are provided to connect the two different rail sections. Thank you, everyone.